Okay, so for the pen one, I have a variety of pens and Sharpies. I've got a few Sharpies that are different sizes. I've got an ultra fine, a fine, and a chisel tip. And one of these, I forget which one, um, the ink is running out. So it's gonna give me a different type of mark than the one that um, is newer. And then I've got several different sized art line pens. One is a 0.8 and a 0 0.05, so really small probably don't need this one, um, point three. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna make a lot of different marks. I also have a paper that's 11 by 14 inches. Um, I felt like with pen, some of this might get to be more detailed marks and it might take a little bit longer. So instead of doing two nine by 12 papers, I got an 11 by 14. I thought I almost did one nine by 12, but I was afraid that when it comes down to like, when you're looking for your, for your, cause you're gonna be doing three squares of each media, that that doesn't leave you as many choices with just one page. So I made it a little bit bigger. So it's 11 by 14. And hopefully that gives you more room for choices when we're searching for those three squares that we're gonna use. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start making marks. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no thoughts in my head whatsoever. Actually, I just thought about music. So now I'm not drawing a clef. It just inspired those marks. And let me try out a different size pen. I'm gonna do the, the 0.8. That's the largest of the drawing pens that I've got. And so this is the part that I thought would take longer. If you get into any like really detailed mark making because you've got such a small, um, fine tipped instrument in a pen, it might take you longer. So, um, so there's that. That's why um, we're just using, using that um, one piece of paper. Sorry, I cannot talk and draw at the same time. <clears throat> so let's talk about some of the actual technical terms that you may remember from art one when you're making marks with pens. So, you know, you have hatching, where you draw lines that are beside each other. So I'm not really thinking about purposefully making um, different values really. I think I want a variety of values, but if you want um, if you want a darker value with hatching, you could use a bigger tipped marker. You can also put your lines closer together. So further apart, you have lighter values closer together. You have darker values. Uh, another way to build value with pen is using cross hatching. So same thing as hatching, except now you can do layers of lines that go different directions on top. And you can make lighter values by putting your lines farther apart. You can make darker values by putting them closer together and by using multiple layers. And another way to build value would be stippling. So let's use the point eight for that. Stippling is when you're using dots. Um, the difference between stippling and pointillism, you might hear people call it pointillism. Pointillism is when you're doing it with color. So I'm stippling by just putting a lot of dots close together using this bigger pen. And that's how you make darker values using stippling. And then to make lighter values, you can gradually spread those dots apart so that you have space between. You can also go down in your pen size. So a 0.3 is smaller than a 0.8. And that makes it a little bit easier to control also. And then you can also just scribble. So if you are scribbling lines that are closer together, also, this is a marker that doesn't work as well, so I can make lighter values with that too. So scribbling with more space in between are gonna be lighter values. Scribbling with your lines closer together are gonna be darker values. So you can create a variety of marks that way. And then you can just layer your different tools on top of each other too. 
So now I'm gonna stop talking so that it, I can use the time lapse and let it go a little bit faster and just work on this a little bit to get some different marks using the different pens. Okay, so I'm finished with my pen paper um, and the next step is to do the ink wash. So for the ink wash papers, I've got two papers. That they're, these are both watercolor paper, um, 9 by 12. I've got ink wash in a dropper so I can control um, the amount of ink coming out easily. And I've got water in a dropper for the same reason. I've got a palette so that I can mix different washes of ink wash here. I've got a jar of water and I've got two paint brushes that work well with watercolor and ink wash. Um, I've got two round brushes, so the pointy ones are round. This one's larger and this one's smaller. So I've got that and then two paper towels. So I'm going to mix up maybe, I don't know, three different ink wash values. So if I take the lid off. I'm going to put some ink straight into here. So that's going to be my really black ink. I can always get more. So I'm not going to fill it up. I'm going to put some water in this one and a little bit less water in this one. Now, if I dip my ink or my paintbrush into the ink just a little bit and then mix it with that water, I'm gonna get like a, a grayish value. So if you want that to be lighter, you could add water to it, or I got a little dark by accident with my first wash. So I'm gonna put water in this one and I'm just gonna take some of this and put it in here and kind of go back and forth until I've got a lighter shade. There we go. Okay, and then I want to make this one just a little bit darker than that one. So I'm going to get more ink, mix it up in here. Let's see what we've got here. Yes, so a darker value. And if I were to put this right in here, I've got straight black. So different ways that you can use ink wash now that I've got these different values. I'm going to rinse this off before I decide. Um, all right, so wet into wet. That means that you can either just straight paint water onto your paper and then add one of your values to that. And then it bleeds and it spreads into the paper. So that's wet into wet. When you paint wet into wet, the values are going to bleed together. So you could paint water and add to that or you could paint like a lighter value and add another value into that. Um, it's just one wet value into another wet value is what wet into wet means. If you're trying to create a gradient, what you might wanna do is start with water and then I'm gonna gradually add my lighter value to it. And you gotta work kind of fast if you want them to blend. And then my next value the darker value and then it's going to be tricky for me going straight to this black because this is so much darker than my darker value so I'm going to put that here and I'm going to try to blend it slowly into the gradient that I created so that's also another way to use wet into wet so you can use wet into wet to try to create smooth gradients um, you can also just paint directly on there to create like one solid value. Um, there's something called dry brush. So like if I take the ink, whether it's straight black ink or a different wash, and I kind of get my brush, like wipe it off a little bit on a paper towel so it's not quite as loaded of a paintbrush, then I can go back and it just makes a different texture. So I want you to play with making different marks different values, different washes, 
you're just playing with the ink wash once you've got it. Um, and so far I've been using this big brush on everything. You can also use that smaller brush. You can play around with the way that you hold the brush. Um, so if I'm just adding a little bit of pressure and holding it straight up, I can get these thinner lines. You can have more control if you hold your brush down here. But sometimes I want to take control away from myself so that I don't plan out my marks too much. And that's why I might hold it up here. Um, you can also lay your brush on the side to get wider marks. And this is really the perfect time to practice all this because we're not trying to make it look good. We're not trying to make it look like anything in particular. We're just making marks. And so you can kind of feel what it's like to do different things and hold your paintbrush different ways. So I'm going to keep working on this until I've got a variety of values and a variety of marks and I'll go ahead and do this other paper too. So here are my ink wash papers. Um, I tried to make them a little bit different so that I would have um, uh, different choices when I end up choosing which three squares to use. So I used more lines in this one and used more flat tonal ranges on this one. Um, so I kind of did that purposefully. So if you can try to vary up what you're doing, um, just so you have more choices when you get down to the end. So now we are at the point where we have finished um, all the papers that we're gonna make. So we can start looking for the squares that we are going to mount onto our, our final project board. So now I have all of my papers here and I have my viewfinder and I have an HB pencil that's sharpened so that um, I can trace whichever square compositions that I like. So you are going to use your viewfinder to find interesting compositions within your media papers. You need three squares from each media. So three graphite, three charcoal, three pen and ink, and three ink wash. So when I'm looking through the square, I'm just looking for areas that I think are interesting and what I think would be an interesting square in itself. Um, and there's lots of things that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about, does it feel balanced? And sometimes that doesn't necessarily matter. Um, are the marks interesting? Does it look like anything? Your papers don't have to be um, the same way that you drew on them and hopefully you kind of rotated them when you made your marks anyway because there isn't really a, a true up or down. They can be turned anyway. So start looking through your square at your marks and see if there's anything that you particularly like. So I'm going to choose this little area. So once I've selected an area, I'm going to hold my viewfinder down really still, and I'm gonna trace the line right up against the window. And then when I move it away, I should still be able to see that square. If you need to get a 2B pencil um, so that you can see it better, you can, but I think as long as I can see where that line's going, then later when I line my ruler up against the part that I can see, I'll know where it stops, it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna choose three squares to use and trace them out on my graphite paper. Then I'm gonna choose three squares of my charcoal. And then I will choose three from my pen and ink and then three of my ink wash. So I'm going to go ahead and outline all those squares now that I'm choosing and I will show you how to cut them in the next section. So once you've got all your squares drawn out onto your media pages, it's time to cut them out using an X-Acto knife or a box cutter like you did your viewfinder. Um, and there's several things that you need to be aware of. Hopefully, when you drew your squares out, I don't know if you can see them on mine, um, but I've got one square here, here, and here. So hopefully you did not make any of them overlap because you need three separate squares that don't overlap anywhere. I liked this page better than the other page, so I, I just ended up using all three of my squares on this page of my graphite. So now it's time to cut. So when you're cutting these, make sure that when you're cutting one side of your square, that you're not going through another square to cut it. For example, 
I have a line here for this square, but if I were to cut this line too far, it's going to hit my other square. So be aware of that when you're cutting your squares. And if you're afraid that you're going to mess that up, it might be smart just to cut those out anyway. So you could just cut them out with scissors and then cut them cleaner. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cut these lines. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut this square out first. I'm going to line my ruler up with that edge and I have my box cutter. I'm pressing down on the ruler and I'm going to cut right on that line. I'm going to rotate my paper and do the same thing. And once you've cut out one square, set it aside, and you can cut out all your other squares. So at the end, you should have 12 squares in all four different media.